If you open up with simple IK with pull vector underscore start in this next section, what we're going to do is we are going to look at what we have to do to the rig in order to support it. And it's a little bit of a, um, a juggling act here because um, we have to feed the script information, but we haven't covered what the script's going to do yet. Um, but what we, what I did was when I looked at this and I said, okay, what needs to happen uh, in order to um, switch from IK to FK and back again. And at that point, I figured out, I had to look at it and say, okay, what can the script do? And then what information do I have to generate for the script in order for it to, to do its job? So let's look a minute at what it is we actually have to do. So going from IK to, first of all, let's look at the rig. We got a little IK controller here, which is just a locator, the handle's a child of that. And we have the pull vector control over there. Pretty simple two bone system. So how do we get from IK to FK? Well, that part's pretty simple. Um, we simply have to record record the rotations of these two joints. Turn the IK blend off and then reset these rotations. Now why do we have to record them and reset them? If they're being animated in FK, the IK is going to override that information. Once you turn off the IK, they're going to go back to where their animation curves are. And that's not really what we want. We, uh, you know, That's just IKFK blending. We could do that out of the box. What we want to do is switch to FK and have it match that position of where it was in, in IK. It's still pretty simple. I mean, you just record the positions and, and paste them back on, but you do have to go through that step. Um, otherwise, the animation curve, if they exist, will uh, force it into a different position. Getting to FK to IK is going to be a little bit trickier. Now, remember what I said before in the last video. It is going to be dependent on this joint being clean. And one of the things that I'm actually dealing with with certain rigs right now is uh, they're plotting mocap, and the mocap is forcing this joint to rotate in uh, different ways than the IK handle is capable of solving. And so we're going back and forth saying, okay, look, we need to not rotate this except in the Y axis. Otherwise, once you turn IK on, it can't match that pose. It's just not possible. So, but we, what we need to do is we need to figure out, one, how to turn the IK back on because that IK handle is down here. I mean, if we just had an IK handle and we were moving around, that part would be easy. We just grab the IK handle. Um, but in this case, it's a child of a control. Why is that an issue? Well, if you have something more complicated like a foot, uh, which might have several IK systems and might be controlling, uh, my feet control, usually they're controlling three different IKs uh, simultaneously. So, you know, you, you don't want to go to the IK handle. You want to go to the master control. Um, I, I didn't want to set up a foot because I didn't want to make it overly complicated. So you're just going to have to trust me that this is a, a simple example, but it, it's illustrating a common problem, which is you have a controller moving the IK handles and not the IK handle directly. So we have to deal with that case. Um, we need to have the IK controller or IK handle snap uh, positionally and rotationally. Why rotationally? Uh, again, if this was a foot controller, the rotation of the controller may be affecting the orientation of the foot and the rest of the IK systems underneath it. So we have to take rotation into account as well. I'm just going to switch that to local. That was annoying me. Um, and thirdly, we have to figure out where the pole vector control is going to go. So let's look at these problems one at a time. First thing, we know that if it's just an IK handle, we just have to manipulate, manipulate the IK blend. So I did this kind of as a convention. Is what I did is the script will look for anything with the IK blend attribute in it. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to add an attribute modify add attribute I'm just going to call it IK blend that's a float with a zero 
minimum and a one maximum. And then we're going to, there's our IK handle, there's a controller. Map those two and I'm just going to plug IK blend into IK blend. Um, this becomes an assumption that our IK controller or IK handle is going to have the IK blend attribute on it. I like keeping those to a minimum. You can't avoid them 100%. You know, you have to start somewhere. Uh, I mean, obviously, you're working in Maya. That's at least one assumption. You're not trying to run Max script or J script in the thing. Um, but you want to keep them as little as possible. And the idea is to set up the rig for the script to figure it out on its own. But it does need a little bit of help. And in this case, we are going to create the assumption that anything that is going to control IK is going to have this IK blend attribute. And the IK handles will have it. That's defined. So we know that we can't give the IK handles a different one. So we're just going to stick to the one that's already on the IK handle. And that is one assumption we're going to make. And we won't make too many, I swear. Uh, the second assumption, as we said before, is that the rig is built correctly and will only rotate in the Y axis. Because if it does rotate in any like this, we just can't solve for that. It's not possible. Um, not with a simple two bone system like this. And as I mentioned before, uh, we could lock this to prevent that from happening. I prefer not to, just in case the animators have to hit a weird pose. Uh, some kind of weird situation where they have to break the rules. Uh, I'd rather have the animators know what the rules are than force them to obey the rules that to them are arbitrary. Um, education is a wonderful thing. It goes a long way. It really does.